Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a closer look at two semiconductor giants. The first one we're going to take a closer look at is Marvel Technology, and the second one is going to be Qualcomm. On today's episode, I want to do more of like a versus video to see which one I prefer right now, especially as both these companies are coming up as some form of AI winner. Let's take a closer look in today's episode. So I think the first thing we want to start off is just by taking a closer look at financials. Remember, they are different size companies. Qualcomm right now is sitting at a market cap of $126 billion with a dividend yield of roughly 2.8%. We have Marvell here with a market cap of roughly $50 billion with a dividend yield of roughly 4.4%. So we can see Qualcomm is roughly 2.5 times bigger. So if we take a closer look at cash flow from operations, we can see great Think both of these companies are positive in cash flow from operations. If we take a closer look at trailing 12 months, though, Qualcomm does come ahead by a huge margin of roughly 9 billion, where Marvell is closer to 1.3 billion. Now, if we take a closer look at cash and short-term investment, very similar. Qualcomm comes in ahead with roughly 6.6 .6 billion dollars in cash and short-term investments, and Marvell comes in with 1.0 billion dollars. Finally, let's take a closer look at long-term debt. Both these companies, both these companies do have have more debt than they do cash and short-term investments or cash flow from operations. But overall, what I want to say is both these companies tend to be performing on a great basis. So financially, even though they have high long-term debt, we can see Marvell coming in with roughly 4.6 billion, Qualcomm coming in with roughly 16 billion. Both these companies are positive in cash flow from operations and do have cash and short-term investments to be able to pay back that money. So overall, I'm not too worried about these companies. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for their subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so next, what I want to take a closer look at is just revenue estimates for both these companies in forms of what analysts are expecting. One thing that we are seeing for both is 2022 was a great year for a lot of semiconductor companies. Unfortunately, due to inventory correction, it does seem like this year of 2023 or the current fiscal year is going to be worse, right? It's going to see a decline. Uh, so that's expected. A lot of these companies are seeing a lot of over inventory correction. Qualcomm depends more in the consumer space. Obviously, we've heard about that a lot. Marvell, on the other hand, deals more with data centers and enterprises, but even their segment is also seeing some form of over inventory correction. Uh, so it's not all ro peaches and roses. Is that the saying for the kind of data center market, especially for certain segments? Now, what it is interesting is obviously for the upcoming years, revenue is expected to grow for Marvell, but for Qualcomm, Qualcomm's trailing 12 months revenue is roughly 41 billion billion dollars analysts don't expect Qualcomm to even pass that kind of revenue in the next two fiscal years so it does seem like analysts believe Qualcomm has peaked for some time I personally believe that both these estimates are a bit under underestimating especially i do believe they are more underestimating for qualcomm not sh too sure about marvell if you might be a marvell shareholder let me know in the comments below but i do believe for qualcomm right now analysts are underestimating the revenue growth now let's take a closer look at marvell so for those that are not familiar with marvell this is a semiconductor company that provides a lot of networking solutions and networking solution is very very important these kind of networking solutions, we kind of only think about it of like internet and stuff like that, but it's also a lot of kind of data processing. And right now we are seeing kind of this AI push, right? This AI push and this AI push is using numerous hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of GPUs and other products to communicate with each other. So obviously... Um, Marvell is able to kind of help with that communication and that's their key pro that's that's one of the key metrics that they have here in the AI space where hey you're going to be using all these GPUs you're going to be using all these products and they need to talk to each other pretty pretty fast and pretty pretty smart come to us we're able to have a lot of solutions that can help you speed up the process so they do mention that they have a lot of custom ASICs which are just custom semiconductor solutions that you can build depending on the customer needs they also have a lot of electro 
optics. Electro optics are usually kind of laser laser products that are used for communication. Nothing is pretty much faster than the speed of light. So obviously that is used for high speed optical communications inside data centers, between cloud data centers. Outside of that, they have a lot of ethernet solutions. They have a huge amount of, of controllers, of network adapters, of physical transceivers and switches. One of their main kind of switches is the Prestera and the Terra Linux ethernet switches, which integrate market optimized innovative features. Outside of that, they also have some fiber channel products. And then they have processors. One of their processors is for the DPUs, data processor units. And their main family line here is the Octeon data processor. They have other processors here, the Nitros X, the Liquid IO server as well. They also have storage controllers, which kind of help communicate a lot of solution or communication between storage devices like hard drive disk and solid state drivers. So right off the bat, we can see that, hey, how does Marvell kind of really impact the AI space? And and overall, just the overall market, right? Their products for communication is not only needed for AI, data center in, in general, and the digitalization of the world is also needing this kind of communication power and networking solutions. Unfortunately, though, unfortunately, we did see that this company's quarter one revenue was down 9% year over year and 7% on a quarter over quarter basis. Like we mentioned, a lot of over inventory correction. This is obviously impacting the company's operating margins and earnings per share. I personally believe this is more of short term pain. It's going to kind of go up from here, uh, eventually go up, right? I don't know how long this downturn is going to be. Um, Marvell believes that quarter two will also be another weak quarter for them. It ex actually is expected to decline 12% uh, year over year. A very small sequential increase of 1% quarter over quarter at the midpoint. Like I mentioned, one great thing about Marvell is data infrastructure is roughly 89% of total revenue. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, data center revenue is seeing a bit of a decline due to inventory corrections. Here we can see data center enterprises, carriers, and automotive industrial are a big player. Some are declining. The biggest one is data center, which is their biggest markets, but they're still seeing growth in enterprises, in carriers, and pretty much flat in automotive market. Uh, they do mention that the growing AI deployments are driving higher optical interconnect product demand, and they also see AI accelerated compute to now be a leading growth driver for this cloud optimized silicon. So remember, just remember, this company's total revenue this quarter was roughly $1.3 billion. The company did share a little bit more insight also during the earnings call about where they believe how AI can go in the future. So in fiscal 2023, they estimate that their revenue was approximately $200 million, up dramatically from the prior year. They are about a fiscal year ahead of us compared to calendar year, right? So they already finished their fiscal 2023 they do expect that the fiscal of 2024 revenue for ai is expected to double so from 200 million to 400 million it's not that much compared to the company's total revenue remember one quarter was roughly 1.3 billion and they expect ai revenue to be roughly 400 million in um in 20 for the full year of 2024 they also do expect looking into 2025 that they expect another doubling so they are forecasting ai revenue growth compounded annual growth rate of over a hundred percent over the fiscal 2023 to 2025. They also mentioned that there are some products that they can't really classify as AI, but those other products are also benefiting from this huge push. So their overall revenue is, obviously their total revenue is not gonna grow at 100% compounded annual growth rate. Their AI revenue is, but obviously other products that they have are also gonna see some form of growth opportunity as well. And I think this is why Marvell is really liked right now. Marvell already has the products in place and they already are seeing this market demand. They are seeing this kind of growth in the AI space from their actual products. And I believe this is where Qualcomm is a little bit different. So Qualcomm is also an AI play in my opinion, but this one still has a lot to prove. So Qualcomm, for those that are not familiar, they create processors. They also connect a lot of networking solutions for your handset, for your mobile devices, for Internet of Things, things to connect to 5G, radio frequency on the front end, um, Wi-Fi, other types of Ethernet solutions as well. So they provide a lot and a lot of semiconductor solutions. If you have an Android device, you're most likely running a Snapdragon processor that was made through Qualcomm. So Qualcomm 
unlike Marvell, is very dependent on the consumer space, especially their handset market, which is their biggest, their biggest revenue space. And that was down 17%. Even though the automotive was up 20%, it means nothing because, again, handset is what drives this company's total revenue, again, the consumer space. And I do believe this is why Qualcomm is not liked as much as Marvell. Marvell, their biggest player, is what? The data center. And I believe investors believe the data center market, even though it is down year over year is still probably more is safer than the consumer market to some extent and again marvell kind of has a product that's already being used in the ai space but if we take and, and if we take a closer look let's just kind of rewind back to qualcomm qualcomm during their earnings call did mention that unfortunately macroeconomic backdrop has resulted in further demand deterioration in a greater magnitude that they previously forecasted. So Qualcomm obviously taking a huge impact due to the consumer slowdown, but they actually for thought that it was going to get better a lot sooner, and now they're seeing that that's not the case, obviously hurting the stock at the moment. They also took some time to kind of talk about AI, and they mentioned that AI is a significant opportunity for Qualcomm. The main reason is they are advancing AI to make core on-device capabilities Right, so Qualcomm right now, if you are doing some form of AI creation, is going through the cloud. What Qualcomm is trying to do is bring that AI creation locally to your device, which has a lot of cost optimized benefits, also has a lot of security benefits, latency benefits, privacy benefits. And they're saying, hey, this is going to be the future of AI products, it's going to be local AI device, uh, local AI management right and they believe that this is an exciting new opportunity for qualcomm and one of their prior and one of their priority in investment areas and i wouldn't say this is the biggest difference between marvell and qualcomm in here in the ai space marvell already has a market right this kind of data center and the communication of data centers especially thanks to the ai workloads that are needed is a market that we're seeing already, right? This is a space that Marvell can easily say, hey, look, we have the products, we have the problem, let's go on and fix it right now, just buy our, our, just buy our products right now. Where Qualcomm, in the other hand, while they do have some great products here for the AI space, I want to say we're still too early to see if that's where we're going to go. Are we going to have every kind of product, every laptop, every phone, every tablet have some form of AI in local device or workload that is going to be able to do a lot of these AI creations. Um, and I believe we're still too early. Once we start to shift from there, though, I do believe Qualcomm will be a huge benefactor. Now, if we take a closer look at PE ratios, both companies are profitable and PE ratios don't look necessarily too crazy. If we take a closer look at Marvell's PE forward PE ratio, um, Forward P forward one year PE ratio is currently twenty four point six. I personally don't think that's too crazy, especially for a company that definitely has some nice growth opportunity. Qualcomm's forward one year PE ratio is eleven point seven. In my opinion, this is cheap. But remember, Qualcomm has a few weaknesses. It's more dependent on the consumer space and its AI solutions. While it is pretty cool and pretty interesting, I still believe that we haven't really seen how the market is going to go if that's going to be the direction that the market is going to go i'm leaning that yes that's going to be the direction and i personally enjoy qualcomm so i do believe both these companies are interesting marvell might be a little bit more highly valued but that's because the market is seeing their opportunity right in front of them in the ai space both companies have great financial qualcomm in the other hand i do believe also is sitting at cheap valuations and I enjoy it a little bit more because the consumer market is, expe is expected to kind of pick back up. And I also believe that this kind of local AI management is going to be the future for a lot of devices. Maybe not for all devices, but for a lot of devices. And Qualcomm can benefit from there. Qualcomm also has other kind of growing opportunities like the automotive market and Internet of Things. So, I mean, at these levels, I personally would purchase Qualcomm. But I do believe Qualcomm might be a little bit more risky in forms of, of completing its tasks to some extent. Marvell is probably more risky in forms of valuation. But I do believe that path is a lot easier to get into, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care. Have a good day. And see you next time.